Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Dave, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me. And uh, now, have you got a, a 70th birthday cake at your, your house? I didn't bring one. Yeah, it's exciting times, obviously. 70 years of communism. I can't think of anything worse. <laughs> well, they had a big uh, military parade at uh, Tiananmen Square, uh, where at the, the gates of Tiananmen, that's where Mao Zedong in October 1st, 1949, proclaimed the, the People's Republic of China. Something happened there also 30 years ago, but nobody knows about that. Oh yeah, Tank Man, and he disappeared, and, and we don't know how many people actually died at that at that point. Uh, yeah, Mao Zedong, uh, I think in, in the year leading up to this day, 70 years ago, he was in a library. Uh, he was in a library planning to overthrow the government. Uh, fingers crossed there's some uh, people in a library in Beijing now planning to overthrow uh, Xi Jinping. Well, he is basically the new Mao Zedong because Mao, he, he was the, the leader of the, the communist revolution, won the Chinese civil war and ruled China from 1949 until his death in 1976. And Xi Jinping, he is now president for life, uh, which is just a polite way of saying dictator. Yeah, emperor, emperor Xi Jinping. Uh, for life, yes, that's correct, and they're on the expanse. Uh, as you said before, he's he said that China cannot be stopped. I tend to agree with that. Recently, I, I, I ran a simulation. It's a simulation between uh, uh, run by CSIS in America. They have an online simulation where you can you can play China or America, and. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's much America can do to China, so I kind of agree with Xi Jinping, even though I don't like it. Yes, he said that no force can shake the status of this great nation, and you and I have both seen the the ramping up of the, the rhetoric uh, from not just Xi Jinping, but all of the Chinese Communist Party agencies it was interesting i was watching some of the the analysis on sky news tonight and they're they're keen to well they they still believe that china is a threat but playing down its economic uh strength uh, but it's it's military power that's that that's where it is is threatening in terms of its actual economy it's not doing that well I tend to disagree with everybody that thinks that China's economy is not doing well. I, I tend to believe it's the largest economy in the world. Uh, they are the richest country in the world. Uh, people will disagree with that. Uh, it's just my, just the way I, I see it. I, I, I believe that people these days have misinterpreted what money is. And uh, money is just the medium of exchange so that you can get hold of goods. And if China is the factory of the world, therefore they're the richest country in the world. And now the protesters in Hong Kong, they're trying to uh, deliver uh, mainland China a birthday present at, at Won't Forget. Now, when the, the extradition bill was, was dropped by, or uh, withdrawn completely, not just delayed uh, a couple of weeks ago by uh, Carrie Lam, the chief executive of Hong Kong, that was sort of meant to signal to the international community and to the international media that that's the end of the matter for now. The, the protesters uh, should just go home, which was code for when the rest of you go home, that's when we're going to do the, the middle of the night thing and, and round them yeah. up and uh, make sure some, something like that doesn't happen again. But the, the, the protesters, they had their, obviously their five uh, list of demands, they've been ramping up their, their demonstrations. They have become more violent themselves, more provocative, engaging in not, not just what you'd call sort of regular protests, but just blatant property damage in that as a way to, to bait the, the Hong Kong police who've largely been forced to be restrained. Uh, but uh, we're seeing, especially with the, the 70th 
anniversary being in full swing that uh, they're, they're starting to get quite triggered. Well, their, their masters are. Well, I guess it started out with peaceful protests and then the Hong Kong police thought that they could beat up the peaceful protest. And then what happened was the peaceful protesters came out in numbers, uh, one million, one and a half million, and then it ended up with two million people in the streets and the police became uh, violent and started arresting peaceful protesters. And then the peaceful protesters realized that uh, you have to fight fire with fire. So then, then what they did was they organized themselves and they have the frontline people, the ones that are dressed all in black with the masks. And uh, some of them have uh, bats and uh, umbrellas. Then there's uh, the second line of defense. They, they, they have the whole organization now, the, the Hong Kong people. And it went just from uh, get rid of the extradition bill uh, to we need five demands because they're not listening to us. So it was uh, at first the extradition bill. Now the five demands are number two. They need a. Uh, they want a uh, the, an inquiry into police brutality. Three. They want uh, amnesty for all protesters that have been arrested. Uh, they want universal suffrage, uh, which is uh, the the. Uh, universal suffrage just means that they want their vote to count. They don't want uh, people to be put in place that uh, uh, if, if Beijing puts five people in place and you get to vote from five uh, puppets, it's not really, uh, your vote doesn't really count. Uh, and uh, gee, the fifth one I forgot. <laughs> it was, they have an international oversight of investigations of police brutality. Yeah, the police, the inquiry into police brutality, amnesty for protesters, and uh, there's one more in there. Oh no, that's it. Yeah, that's it. And I was thinking there's more. Yeah, we already mentioned the first one. Yeah, yeah. Now, when I saw those uh, listed demands, I was like, they're dreaming. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, these protesters are not like the the idealists in in Western nations where they have these sort of pipe dreams. And as you mentioned, they're becoming more militarized. It's it's, it's really it's it's like in the, the the old days where you had to you know put your body on the line if you wanted to defend uh, your rights as as individuals. They they know how how difficult it is to achieve these demands and uh, so that's why they're they're really uh, taking it up and well yeah they're prepared to die yeah some are prepared to die and someone uh well yeah we didn't mention that uh a protester was just shot uh just before we started recording this yeah uh, yeah it's, that, uh, which is pretty front, shocking. Front page news everywhere. It'll be front. It'll be. It'll be front page news everywhere. It'll be all over the news, uh, and we don't really care what the Chinese people inside the mainland think about this. This is great proper propaganda for us uh, to prove that on the seventieth anniversary, they're still willing to kill people. Uh, it's, how much more evidence do we need that this uh, Chinese Communist Party is the worst regime on planet Earth? And they're the most paranoid regime on the on the planet. They they ex care ex extremely highly about what other people think of them, other other nations, other media, uh, other non-government organizations, and. Like, to, and it would have been choreographed this uh, celebration in Tiananmen Square, like to the to the teeth. Like, I I'm not sure if many of our viewers remember the the 2008 uh, Beijing Olympic Games. This was a propaganda exercise, and they wanted it to be so perfect that they got an attractive girl to sing at the the opening ceremony, but her voice wasn't as good as another girl but this girl wasn't as pretty and so they made sure that they had the the best voice and the best looking girl to project this image even though basically they said to one girl uh you're too ugly uh you can't sing that that shows just how much they they care about their image 
we kind of do that in the West too. Oh, uh, we've <laughs> never. That's something like that was unheard of. <laughs> what about? Oh, okay. I won't mention people, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's when you look at the parade that's happened today, it it looks similar to what North Korea puts on. <laughs> I, I don't know if they they are uh, uh, self-aware enough <laughs> to what the way we see China, but to see uh, Xi Jinping coming out with uh, all of this military hardware as a celebration, uh, what type of message are you, tell to, uh, are you trying to project out into the world? That you're a threat to the world? Uh, when, when we put on a, a parade, we don't bring out tanks. <laughs> and uh, nuclear weapons, uh, they're, their own, they're, they're their own worst enemy in China. They, they, they're making themselves look stupid, and North Korea does the exact same thing. Uh, they're both awful regimes, and they need to go. Do you agree that it's gotten worse? So, but like, obviously, I use the the Beijing two thousand eight Olympics as a as a flashpoint. That's when that type of propaganda before, because Facebook, Twitter. WhatsApp, Telegram, those things were either not invented or not hardly in use. And so you could filter this out to the rest of the world and it'd largely be consumed. But 11 years later, we've been seeing for ourselves what's been happening in, in Hong Kong, the, the brutality of the police using uh, gas to, uh, uh, to basically uh, sedate the the protesters or anyone who who gets in the way the the uh, the the beatings that they try to try to hide up it's and a, as you mentioned they're they're reacting in the worst place worst way possible because what does a completely paranoid and illogical person do when they feel threatened they behave erratically what they've done is they uh they, their message is quite clear do what we say, or the consequences will be violence. There's no other way to interpret the way uh, China behaves. Uh, they're doing it in Hong Kong. They 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 have the same message for the, the Taiwan Taiwanese people. They have the same message for the South Koreans. Uh, uh, we just had a, a Chinese foreign minister uh, uh, give a message to the Australian people. Uh, pretty much saying that yeah the academic economy, uh, your economy relies on us uh, we're, we're still in a diplomatic freeze with China China refuses to speak to us they just see us as a an ancient tributary state we are just there to do what we are told and he was it was pretty much a message from this so-called academic that your economy relies on China and do what we say or your economy will collapse and that's been my prediction for a very long time that china will try to destroy our economy and that's uh our reliance on them is uh is our own fault but china doesn't see it as trade they don't see it as oh well we need to buy something from you and we pay money for that and and it's an equal uh, even trade no they see it as if they own us because we rely on them buying something from us uh it's it's what, are, what do you call it neo-capitalism uh it's that's the way they see all the countries around them they don't see them as equals and they don't see australia as an equal either well we saw scott morrison when he had the state dinner with with donald trump in the the united states he began to speak about china in the same way that the trump did of course the australian media here said oh you're sucking up to up to trump or would you rather he suck up to the the leader of the free democratic world or a 70 year old communist dictatorship but he was saying that we shouldn't con consider china a developing nation anymore it's pretty much a first world country economy now and so we we need to treat it as such and if it is 
threatening its its neighbors wanting to abuse its its influence then it needs to be taken on and we've seen the the labor party even though it attacked liberal mp gladys Liu over her ccp links they've gone full china apologist mode saying that scott morrison is damaging the relationship with beijing and a deputy labor leader and defense spokesman richard miles he's come back from a three-day study trip in beijing where he said that oh we should we it was wrong to you know compare them with regimes like nazi germany we need to have closer defense ties with them more more integration uh you know china has really developed and just sort of face palm it's like have you not been paying attention to anything this past month and you took a study tour to beijing and you come back and say yeah it's great oh uh, domestic politics in a in a democracy is a threat to our our, our international relations. <laughs> we have if we have meatheads in the in uh, meathead politicians trying to score some domestic points at the expense of our international reputation. Uh, look look at both of both of the leaders. Their nicknames say it all. Domo and Albo. We just got Bogans running this country that would rather, uh, even Kevin Rudd came, came to Australia and tried to score some uh, uh, domestic points for the Labour Party. Crud. And, and there's a lot of people that, as you said, they, they go on little tours of China. Some guy from this other political party, CEC, he went over there and he saw a train and he came back and he said, I think we can make this work. Oh my goodness, these people are fools. So what happens is you go over there, you say you're a part of a political party in, in Australia, uh, millionaires and billionaires will take you out to and wine and dine you and take you out to nightclubs and take you to the best restaurants and drive you around in Bentleys. I've been out there myself. They treat you like a, an absolute king over there. They treat you so well, you don't get to see the, the dark side. Uh, and, uh, and then they come back here after a three-day tour and and they just buy all this uh uh political power by just conning people and you also mentioned uh uh china's developing uh, uh status in uh, the wto if you have a look at the wto website you'll notice that uh it's they are uh, china is listed in uh a, a group of countries in Asia, and China's listed with countries like Cambodia. Which is one of the poorest in the world. Malaysia, and, and, and Thailand. There is no way the largest economy and richest country in the world should be listed there. And we would, we would think it is totally okay if they weren't spending all of their money in geopolitics and building this one belt one road initiative or building a military or taking the south china sea if all of those billions or trillions of dollars were spent on their own people sure it would be okay for them to remain as a developing country but they're engaging in geopolitics they're officially a threat to the world and they're trying to con us by having uh, developing country status and if you have a look at the webs the website it means that they have better terms they have longer time frames to uh, pay back debts and uh, come to agreements they have uh, better more favorable terms than everybody else and it doesn't seem right that a country like that is threatening Australians saying that your economy relies on us and then they turn around and say oh the the global times came out recently and said oh we probably need another 30 years until we'll be a, officially a developed country what they're really trying to tell us is that their gdp per capita is under 10,000 and australia's gdp per capita is almost 50,000 it's declining we'll probably end up uh, 40,000 at the moment so what they're saying is uh say five times our economy we will have the same GDP per capita as, say, Australia, United States, or, or Britain. So what they want is a is a GDP of a hundred trillion and to be five times the size of America, so they can push around every country in the world 
And then they'll, they'll declare themselves as a developed country, which is just outrageous and a serious threat for every person in the world if we don't do something about it now. <laughs> that plan to, oh, we're on, only going to, we shouldn't be considered a, a developed nation until basically with our population uh, per capita, we're as rich as all the other nations, which well, <laughs> they, they could basically steamroll every other nation there. And in the meantime, of course, it hasn't stopped them uh, trying to, to buy other nations. Uh, Winston Peters, the, the deputy New Zealand prime minister and, and foreign minister, uh, uh, talked about their checkbook uh, diplomacy in the Pacific region. He's I think probably the only sane one left in the, the New Zealand parliament when it comes to uh, China. He, he was asked, oh, how could you call it that? He's like, well, they call it that. What else are you supposed to call it? But because you know, he is in coalition with Jacinta Ardern, he still went to the 70th anniversary reception at the Chinese embassy in Wellington, New Zealand. So he he's obviously compromised because he's in coalition, but he's the least cucked one left in New Zealand. If China is able to play us off against each other, this alliance that we have with New Zealand, I know this is something that no one really talks about, but what if, you know, the, 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 this is how America did it in the past. They, they play countries off against each other. Uh, if it comes down to money, there's a possibility that America will be able to play Australia off against New Zealand, play Australia off against Indonesia. Uh, if I was America and I was looking for an ally in this southern part of Asia, uh, it, objectively, after looking at what is happening, I would probably think that Indonesia would make a better ally for the United States than Australia. Even though I'm an Australian, I really hate to see that happen, but we really need to get our act together down here. Let's just put it that way. Australia and New Zealand need to be on the same page. Well, I probably think that New Zealand is a lost cause. I mean, they, they still had pro-Hong Kong uh, democracy protests there, but and they were bloodily, and I use that word, bloodily suppressed by pro-China people who appeared out of nowhere. There's a bit more scrutiny in Australia when the the pro-China activists are, are bust into these uh, pro-Hong Kong demonstrations. But like obviously New Zealand is still a, a democracy and there's supposedly civil liberties. But if you're a, a Chinese person in New Zealand, you've certainly got less rights than a, Ch a Chinese person in Australia. You have less rights or more rights? Uh, less rights in New Zealand. Oh, okay. Or less protection, I'd say. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, it's, the subversion in Australia is getting out of control as well. Uh, but we are starting to do little things to fight back, like freezing, uh, Huang Jingmo's bank accounts. I thought that was an amazing move. Well, he's, he's been booted out of the country. He's, he's not allowed back in because Asia have said he's a security risk. He wanted to become a citizen and his family did. He's now banned from ever returning. Yeah, there's, there's a slight uh, shift happening, which is very positive to see. The problem is China is huge. It is an enormous country and it has a lot of power. And uh, China has allies that we are not aware of yet. Uh, they're making friends and they're building al uh, secret alliances in Asia that we're not aware of. And uh, we need to keep an eye on what's going on because it's far more serious. If you have a look at what's happening in Hong Kong and people being shot, uh, th this could end up on our shores. Yeah, Quite true. Easy. I mean, we only are focusing on New Zealand because they're our Anglosphere cousin, but you're right. We don't know what's happening in other Asian nations. Uh, we are, have run out of time. Uh, I'm going to have to shut you up now before you go on another tangent. <laughs> uh, but thank you for uh, joining me for this uh, anniversary. And I you and I both hope, but 
Um, that, that's just a hope that this is the last significant anniversary of the People's Republic of China. It won't be. It won't be. They're going to win, unfortunately. And I, I tried to keep my answers as short and sweet as possible this time. Thank you, Dave. Uh, we'll definitely chat again soon. Thanks for having me, Tim. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows and to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.